So we've got seven cameras, two locked off and five manned. Two handhelds, one on the track and two and four either side. Rugby is a huge part of, of who I am and I do so many other things that sometimes it gets lost in the, in the, in the sense I'm a rugby player. So to do a show like Scrum 5, for me, keeps my identity um, as a player. And, you know, I'm a fan and I love the game. So being able to come and talk about the game with you know, some greats of the game as well, you know, Mark Williams and the, the guys that I get to meet on the show and stay in touch with, for me it's an honour to be able to come in and do it. Like. Rugby is a national game you know, and, and it affects people in positive ways when we win and negative ways when we lose. You know, I always used to realise as a player, if you play on a Saturday and you win, people on a Monday go to work whether they love their job or hate their job with a smile on their face. And I think when you, when you have, you know, when you hold that responsibility as a player in, in your hands then you see that, you know, you really do see the effects of it. So to me, you know, I, I feel that like rugby has an influence on, 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 on a nation because it's a national sport. Got this thing called Force Finder now, where we can ca calculate the speed a player was going, put his weight in, and work out the force of the collision. Oh, right, okay. So, say he wants to talk about line speed and arrows and how well his defence was good and the way they ran, but we can sort of rub people out and move them around and circle them and yeah. highlight them. During the Six Nations uh, and the Autumn Internationals, we do the show slightly differently. We take it into the club, yeah. And we have a live audience, uh, and it's a bit more of a light entertainment show. It's supposed to be a bit of fun, and um, yeah, we invite four guests um, into the show. I guess everything depends on whether or not Wales win for those games. Um, so, um, you know, if there, if, if there is a great result for Wales, there's a good atmosphere in the studio, and uh, if it's a bad result, then there's a bad atmosphere, and there's a lot less energy in here. So it was great today because uh, Wales beat South Africa yesterday. So um, it meant that, you know, there's a real buzz in the studio. We had great guests, Gareth Thomas, Martin Williams, Shane Howarth, Jonathan Davis and uh, Richard Hibbert turned up behind the bar as well. So that gave it, um, that was a nice surprise. Sean Holly does his analysis. Um, the whole show is a sort of a, a mixture of chat, um, analysis that Sean Holly does, um, features, musical montages, action, highlights of the actual game, highlights from the Pro 12. Um, and then we take in some questions sometimes on Twitter. We've got about 60,000 Twitter followers now. I was worried, I think, as every Welsh supporter would have been at six points and, and you know, four or five minutes to go. And the mindset up here is set piece. Uh, if you're dominant set piece, then you, then, then you win games. Different mindset down south. And so down south, you, you perceive the Northern Hemisphere sides as just big, ugly brutes that, that will try and scrummage you to death and drive you to death. And that, that perception has been highlighted in some games in, in these autumn tests. Um, but I think what I enjoyed about Wales yesterday was I, I saw a little bit of it trying to go get some width in their game and trying to play a bit more unstructured play. And I think if they can adapt to both those, um, I mean, it's hard to say. If you watch New Zealand, you see how they can play a power game if you want them to, but they can also play a wide game. I think any side that, that can manage that to be able to do that is really dangerous. And it was really pleasing seeing the Welsh yesterday start to give the ball some air. And I think if they, they've, got to keep, they've got to carry that on. They have to carry that on. On and if they do that, they'll break the mould. I mean, look at what Ireland's doing at the moment. Ireland's breaking the mould because they've been able to do both. So I think Wales needs to go down that path.